How you doing everybody? Hope you're having a good day. You ever see what happens when someone, maybe an accident happens and you, you look at the people that are running around, uh, some of them acting like they have no idea what's going on and others jumping into action and helping others. Uh, the today's subject is going to be kind of based on that. It's called Be Prepared. You know, uh, we, we realized this was the motto of the Boy Scouts for many years, and, and it was a good thing to teach young men to be prepared to assist others and jump into action when needed. Of course, with the direction that organization is going, preparedness is probably the last thing on their minds right now. But we also understand that being prepared helps us to cope and deal with the issues we might face at any given time. We must be prepared to play in our mind possibilities and how we would respond if called upon. I mean, let's face it, we do this when we drive. I mean, we're, we're sitting there, we look at our surroundings, we see what cars are where in our proximity, and then if all of a sudden the car in front of us stops suddenly, what are we going to do? Well, if we know that there's a space over to the left, we'll veer over there to the left if we know there's space at the right. So we have to always keep things in mind that something could happen. And you, you might say, well, what would I do if I came upon an accident that just happened? I mean, here, people are dazed and confused. Uh, people are starting to get out of their cars and see if they can assist in any way. What would I do? Who would I call? I mean, and if you have the proper training, you can go in and take charge and direct people to uh, do certain things. I mean, there, there's a provision in the law called an incident commander, where the first person who comes on directs everybody else and says, you go make a phone call, you go get some towels, you go get some water, you go do this. And they are in charge until an official gets there and takes over that responsibility. And so we just have to question, what would I do in things like that in different types of situations? And we have to face the possibility that things happen. And most of the time, things happen without warning. I mean, let's face it. When, when we leave our house going to church or going to the store or something, we're not expecting someone to run the red light and run, plow into our vehicle. And so what would we do then? And we have to be aware of that. And we see this in the business world. You know, businesses that work in dangerous environments are always prepared to jump into action. We know that it's kind of expected of them. And this preparedness comes from first recognizing a potential hazard that's uh, in its place. And second, to warn the workers that a hazardous condition exists. And third, to train the workers how to be safe for themselves and then for others. And then to train them in the methods and procedures if and when the situation becomes dangerous and then continue to train. You know, it, it's just like some people, they carry tools in their car just in case there's an emergency, they have to do, work on their own vehicle or maybe they have the possibility to help someone else in their emergency. And of course, with all the litigation in, in society, many companies have had to come and post warnings. You know, you know stuff like, uh, don't breathe when you're underwater. I mean, kind of stupid stuff when you think about it. But uh, they have all this litigation because people are stupid, they wander into places, they, 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 they see a sign that says electric fence, they want to go up and find out if it's really electric. They get shocked and then they want to sue somebody for it. So the warning signs are there. Don't drink this liquid. Uh, and and uh, so anything that's toxic, maybe ke household chemicals. Yes, they have phone numbers on there, poison control and all that stuff. You have to be ready to call if somebody ingests it. All right, so... You know, it, everywhere we go, even as kids in school, remember we had fire drills? Well, how often, how many times did, was there actually a fire when the fire drill went off? Well, we didn't know that, so we just go out and get a few few minutes break from class, and we just return to the class. But uh, 
sometimes it, it's necessary. But if there's a real emergency, they want people to leave in order and decently and, and, uh, and, and quickly. And so that's why they have fire drills. That's why they have emergency drills, earthquake drills out here in California. Uh, when, when they feel a shaking, get under your desk or something like that. So there's always preparation that is being taught. This is what you do if this happens. If the floor starts shaking, you get under something. And so, yes, being prepared. And so, while well, each person has a responsibility to use the tools properly and refrain from, from personal habits, which could cause dangerous situations, things must be in place in case someone does something dumb and causes a problem. So this preparation is almost like insurance. When you think about it, some of the safest places to, to work are the most dangerous places to work. And by that, I mean, they recognize there is a dangerous situation there. And if people do not pay attention, somebody's life will get hurt or killed. And so they post signs all over the place. They, they go through training and instruction. They tell you the warning signs to what to watch for and the prevention measures and how you can watch if somebody else is not doing a safety measure. I mean, that could injure you. So you want to be able to speak to others about maybe following the rules. All right, so we, we've talked about this. The idea of being prepared is something yet that we need. But let's break this into a spiritual application. See, being prepared to go to heaven is a little different because we're talking about the soul and its eternal destiny. See, a fire explosion may kill us, but being unprepared to face our Creator is just plain dumb when you think about it. It is far more serious than physical preparedness. See, the manuals and books that businesses use are required by law to be in place where they can easily be referenced. And sadly, many Bibles may be lying around, but they are seldom consulted. And you know that's true. That's the way people are. And so that, that makes it dangerous for the souls when these people don't follow the rules of the Bible. The rules are there put there for a reason, it's for your protection, for your safety. And if you don't want to follow the rules or adhere to the proven plans and guidelines, well, if you're in the business world, they terminate you. We don't need anybody doing unsafe things that they can get hurt or hurt somebody else. And we certainly don't want someone getting, getting hurt and suing us. So following the Bible is, uh, is something we need to do. So when the workers aren't properly trained, there's a possibility they could die or cost someone else. And when people ignore the Bible, they put their souls into a dangerous situation. See, the Bible is our instruction manual on in how to get everyone safely into heaven. And that's how we need to look at it. It is our guidebook, it is our rule book, it is our instruction manual, and it's a manual we can consult in emergency situations and if there's not an emergency situation, we can still consult the Bible. And it gives us the good guidelines that we need to follow. It's our instruction manual. And if people will follow the instructions and accept the training seriously, it can happen. People can get to heaven that way. But people fail to consider their soul much at all. And a lot of times the Bible is just ignored. And so paying to attention to the Bible and following what it teaches can save our souls. And that's what we need to realize. Everyone has a soul. There's no doubt about that. And there are only two destinations for the soul. When we read the scriptures, we know it's appointed for man once to die and after that the judgment. At judgment, we're going to be separated right and the left from God. The, the faithful on the right, the wicked on the left. And where will we be? Well, that depends on where we live our lives and how we, if we are prepared for heaven or not. And so we either have a horrible existence for those who are unprepared or an eternal bliss for those who are prepared. 
I had a preacher friend one time say, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And that's true. You know, if you look at Matthew 25, remember the story of the, the ten virgins who went up there waiting for the bridegroom to come? Uh, five of them had extra oil in their, their lamps, and, and they were ready to replace that oil, and five were not. So they said, well, give us some. Well, we might run out. So they went and bought it, and while uh, they went and bought their oil, they came back, and the bridegroom had come, and the door had been closed. Guess what? It was too late for them. And so we must be honest with ourselves and ed educate ourselves to be become prepared for the end of our life. And we don't know when that's going to be either. Well, some people might know uh, their time might be coming short. Uh, some people get up in age and their body starts shutting down on them. Well, my time on earth is short, and so uh, uh, I'm, I'm about to die. Other people, they may not know it. I, I've known people just fall over dead, and it turns out they had some serious disease or some cancer or something bothering them, and they just didn't know it. I mean, in a way, ignorance is bliss up to a certain point. But if we're not prepared to enter heaven, and the only way we're going to know we're prepared is if we read and study the instruction manual and put those things into practice. If we do that, then we're going to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. But if we don't put those things from the Bible into practice, if we don't do those things, we're going to hear the words, depart from me, you who practice iniquity, or depart from me, I never knew you. So think about these thoughts, and this is something uh, we need to recognize. We need to be prepared. And so we wish you a good day. Uh, some of you are getting back into assemblies uh, again, and, and that's great. Uh, we're, we're about to start real soon, uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as we're allowed. But uh, until that time, just be prepared. Realize that we're not promised tomorrow. So follow the, the instructions from James 4. Don't say today or, or tomorrow we're going to go to such and such a city and do that. We don't know. James says your life is but a vapor. I mean, we're here for right now, but we may not be here tomorrow. And we never know that. We do not know those things. Look at the newspaper. Look at the obituary. Find, see all the people. Turn on the news. See how many people who got up thinking they was going to go through their normal routines, all of a sudden, they don't survive and they don't see the sunset. Uh, they, don't, they don't see the, the sunrise the next morning. We don't know when that's going to be. Consider those thoughts. And I'm going to let you go for now, and hopefully I'll be back tomorrow with another message. And y'all take care now. Bye-bye.